Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss how risk and materiality influence or affect the audit evidence. First, what I'm going to do, I'm going to briefly discuss what is risk, what is materiality. Now, materiality or performance materiality was discussed much, much more in details in several recordings. That's fine. But today I'm going to discuss it briefly in order to draw the relationship between risk materiality and evidence. Now, I can summarize this whole lecture in one statement which I will at the end, but it's very important as an accounting student, as a CPA candidate, to understand how risk and materiality affect evidence. So let's start by de defining risk. What is a risk? Risk quantify or measure uncertainty. Now as auditors, we have to assess the risk associated with auditing financial statements. We can set the risk at five, 10 or 15%. And this is going to help us determine how much evidence do we need to select the nature of the audit procedures that we need to perform. So it will help us determine the scope, nature of the audit, and procedures needed to obtain audit evidence. And we talked about this when we discussed risk of material misstatement. On the other hand, materiality measures or assesses the magnitude of the mistake. Now, materiality was explained in several recordings. If you want to understand this in this concept is our tolerance for mistake. And materiality is a subjective concept. It can vary depending on the, on the context of the audit. So materiality is a figure that we have to set. How much are we willing to tolerate mistake? What is a, what, when is a mistake material? What, at what dollar amount? Again, that is a subjective concept. And we explain why in the recording. So the auditor will need to assess materiality when planning and conducting an audit. Also, it will help in the nature, extent, and audit procedures. So now the relationship between risk, materiality, and audit evidence is all interconnected. Why? Because the auditor will need to take into account the risk materiality in order to determine the evidence. What is the evidence? How much do we need to collect? Determine the amount, type of audit evidence required to support the audit opinion. And that's why they are all interrelated. So I'm going to explain using a simple example first, then use an example for a financial statement to illustrate these concepts. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Let's assume you want to travel from New York to Boston, and you have two options. You can take the plane, fly from New York to Boston, or you can take the train. And now I'm going to be throwing some figures, some percentages, but those are not real, just to make the point. Let's assume there's a 5% chance of an accident occurring, whether you take the plane or you take the train. You know, that's not true, but let's assume that's the case. So the risk of an accident occurring is 5%. So the risk is the same, whether you take a plane and whether you take the train. How about the consequences or the magnitude or the materiality of the risk? Is it the same? If an accident happened on a plane, what would happen to the passengers? What would happen to the passengers if an accident happened on a train? Well, here what we go. Here's here what we're going to say. And again, I'm using extreme numbers or extreme example to make the point. If a plane goes down, there's a 0% you surviving on that plane. So the consequences are great. If a train accident occurred, we're going to assume there's a more than 50% surviving a train accident. So notice, the risk is the same. The risk of the accident occurring is the same. However, the materiality, the magnitude, the consequences of the risk is not the same. So the plane, it's a higher risk, higher magnitude. Same risk, higher magnitude of the risk, higher materiality of the risk. So let's assume you are an inspector with the government agency, you know. What, what's going to happen is this. As an inspector, and here what we mean by inspector, you know, auditor, but let's assume you're an inspector to kind of make this example realistic. You're inspector of the transportation agency. You are more likely to be more nervous 
more nervous means you want to do more work when inspecting the plane. Why? Because the consequences of missing something is great. You don't want to take that chance. So notice the materiality. You want to check everything. You want to check the tires, the engine, the software, the equipment, the lights, the brakes. Everything on that plane you want to check or you want to check as much as possible on the plane because the materiality is higher than inspecting a train. Now, again, this is in theory. As an inspector, you need to do your work, whether it's a plane, train, a bus, or anything else. But I'm trying to make the point here. So let's take the analogy from the airplane and the train trip and superimpose it on two companies. We're going to look at two companies. One company we're going to consider risky. And what, what we mean by risky is they have a high inherent control and a high control risk, a high risk of material misstatement. And we're going to compare this to a company where they have a low inherent risk and a low control risk, which is a low risk of material misstatement. If you don't understand what risk of material misstatement is, inherent risk or control risk, and how they all relate to each other, you want to go to my audit risk model. All what you have to accept now is we have a risky company and not a risky company. And we're going to, you know, go further and say that a risky company will have more mistakes. Notice each X here is a mistake. Notice there are more Xs, more mistakes in the risky company. Now, how to set materiality? for these two companies so if you're setting materiality for these two companies what do you want to do if the company is risky remember if the company is risky and i'm going to go step further remember risk and magnitude they kind of go hand in hand if the company is risky and the magnitude is even riskier what do i have to do like remember that inspector i have i want to catch as many mistakes and look at them as possible so my tolerance goes down my tolerance goes down now Let's assume I'm going to just, just to choose a number randomly. I'm going to set my materiality at 100,000 for this company. And this is the materiality 100,000. So notice if I set my materiality at 100,000, I'm going to ignore or not really look into those four mistakes. And I'm going to be catching those, the one that's above 100,000, look at them. Because the one below, they're not as material, as important. And let's assume I'm going to set the same materiality for the risky company so if i go and i set my materiality here look what's going to happen i'm going to be ignoring or missing all these mistakes notice it's a risky company i set my materiality high i'm going to be missing a lot i'm going to be missing all these mistakes so what do i have to do then if i want to be more careful i i'm, I'm the inspector i am the auditor and i want to catch as many mistakes because the company is risky i would lower my materiality I would lower my materiality. Why? Because I want to expand my net. I want to catch as many mistakes as possible. Now, if I want to, I, I will set it up at zero, but that's not possible and inspect everything because we, 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 we sample. We can do that, right? But I have to set my materiality at some point. So lower materiality. So in theory, set materiality to zero. It's trying to catch everything, low materiality. So simply put, the lower the materiality, the more evidence I have to collect because I'm going to be trying to catch as much as possible. So that's the important relationship I was trying to tell you at the beginning. There's an inverse relationship between materiality and the amount of evidence. If I set my materiality low, I need to catch as much evidence as possible. I have to do more work. As my materiality, which is the risk for mistakes, my tolerance for mistakes goes down, I need to collect more evidence. Once again, materiality goes down i need more evidence and the opposite is true what should you do now go to farhat lectures and look at additional resources that's going to help you understand this concept materiality control risk inherent risk the risk of material misstatement how they, they all relate to evidence invest in yourself the cpa exam is worth it good luck and study hard